Welcome to our Waldner Lab Cafe online. And thanks a lot that so many people are interested in this amazing project. My name is Alexander Biller, and I'm looking forward to share a lot of inspiration with you. Our topic today, Roche Accelerator, business booster for breathtaking ideas. And the Roche Accelerator is the first in-house accelerator globally representing Ross' long-term commitment to Shanghai and China. Located in Shanghai, this 5,000 square meter building will be home to state-of-the-art laboratories, offices, and collaboration spaces for entrepreneurs focusing on pharma, diagnostics, and personalized healthcare, including artificial intelligence and digital solutions. The accelerator catalyzes and empowers entrepreneurs to bridge the gap between concept and proof of concept through Roche's dedicated team, full spectrum research and development R&D and commercial capabilities in China. And the Roche accelerator has recently claimed three impactful awards in China for its leadership and excellence in delivering and fostering breakthrough innovation for the healthcare ecosystem. The honors includes the Healthy China Innovation Best Practice Case 2022 and the Corporate Social Responsibility Excellence Award 2022 and Dr. Choi Song Tang head of Roche Accelerator was selected as one of the 2022 Forbes China 100 outstanding overseas returnees. So it's a really pleasure that Dr. Tang is on board and impulse number one is from his side. He's focusing on the question, what are the targets, visions and challenges behind the project? So Choi Song leads Roche Accelerator to expand Roche's capability in early research and development in China across pharma and diagnostics by partnering with scientists, entrepreneurs, and venture capitalists. Prior to joining Roche, Dr. Tang was a strategy consultant at IQVIA Consulting Services Singapore office and Roland Berger Munich Shanghai office with equity research experience from Merrill Lynch, Singapore. And Dr. Tang holds it, um, a PhD in neuroscience from Humboldt University of Berlin, Germany, and a master in neuroscience from University College London. Wow. So it's a really pleasure and an honor, Choi Song, that you're on board. Impulse number two um, is about how can we transform an existing building to an amazing startup place with Zach Sang, he's project manager at M. Mosa Associates. So he is the planner, the architectural perspective. And as a project director with consulting and client side experience in design and engineering management, construction, administration, and BIM management. SEC has been involved in several large scale projects of diverse building types throughout China, including high rise corporate HQ, R&D, manufacturing, healthcare and campus master planning. So it's, it's an honor that you are here, SEC. Looking forward to your impulse. And impulse number three is focusing on the question, why can we accelerate our business here faster than anywhere else. With my colleague, Tolga Berg, he's senior consultant at Waldner Concepts Innovations and has an applied background in biology. He has designed many projects for pharma, life science, biotech, and manufacturing industries. He is also a lead green associate and a green lab professional for sustainable lab processes and planning. So at the end, we have a Q&A session. If you have question, Questions, write it in the chat and we will answer them. So I would say, let's start, learn, let's learn more from the experts behind this amazing project. Um, take a good cup of coffee and be inspired. So Choi Song, I hand over to you, to your impulse. Thanks. Thank you, Alex, for the kind introduction. And uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody from everywhere in the world. 
very nice to meet you in this session and to introduce Roche Accelerator. I'm the head of Roche Accelerator. My name is Cho Song. And in the next couple of minutes, uh, we're going to give a brief introduction about Roche Group, our footprint in China, the concept and goal of Roche Accelerator, our progress and achievements, as well as a teasing introduction of the building before I hand over to Zach and Toga. So I hope everybody can see my uh, shared screen uh, and I will uh, start the presentation. A very brief numbers, facts and figures about the Roche Group. Everybody knows Roche Group is a family founded business based in Basel, Switzerland with more than 125 years of history and is the world leading biotechnology and diagnostic company. In 2021, we have hit the sales of more than 60 billion Swiss francs. And uh, I believe our latest sales figure for 2022 was just out with further increase in our sales. Moreover, Roche is the first and the highest R&D investor in healthcare with more than 20% of our sales revenue into R&D every year. This represents to a more than 100,000 employees worldwide with more than 60 million people treated worldwide with our medicines and a, law, and a lasting and a sustainable entrepreneur enterprise with more than 30 medicines on the World Health Organization list of essential medicines. Roche has a very unique innovation model that is different from many other multinational pharmaceutical companies that we pursue scientific freedom to work and think in different ways with autonomous research and early development units across different geographies. This includes Genentech from San Francisco, United States, Pharma Research and Early Development from our Basel headquarters, Chugai from our uh, Tokyo, Japan, as well as the latest autonomous China Innovation Center of Roche or CCO since July 1st, 2022. And the Roche Accelerator is embedded in this organization. And towards the late stage and commercialization, we centralize our efforts and resources into global execution. In addition to that, we also partnered with more than 220 partners around the world to foster external innovation, as well as our recent acquired companies, including gene therapies, as well as personalized healthcare. A little bit about what we, what is our aspiration and goal here in China and the ecosystem here. What we want to achieve by accessing Chinese innovation is that we believe hardly, um, firmly that more than or even 99% of our scientific progress happens outside Roche. And because of that, we want to be part of the ecosystem. We want to innovate here and use the science for patients for all over the world, from China to the world. And that is coming from our CEO, our chairman, vice chairman of the board of directors. So what is Roche Accelerator and why we want to build the first in-house Roche Accelerator globally in China? That is, that is because we realize there's a big gap between scientific hypothesis to a commercialized or late development of a therapeutics. And because of the nature of drug discovery, it is mostly high cost, high risk, and lengthy in duration. Many good ideas in drug discovery actually drops off. And we feel that we could do something to support and incubate and help these startups by providing biopharmas know-how to support their translation work. And because Roche has one of the most committed R&D capabilities, resources, and, and the footprints here in Roche, in China, we believe we could build a bridge 
to support these startups by providing their critical needs to success and accelerate their value inflection through the process from target assessment to early development. Of course, we cannot do this alone. So we also partnered with our collaborators, including Venture Capital, Hill House, as well as the local, uh, uh, local uh, industry developer, Zhang Zhang Group, to join hand and provide a holistic support to the startups. Essentially, we have listed here some of the items that we provide, we support, and in return, what we get from this very exciting initiative in China. We are building a state-of-the-art Roche facility here, and we're going to show you later. We also have dedicated coaching and guidance from Roche senior scientific and business leaders, from CCOR, from our, uh, our different R&D groups, as well as business units all over the world. We provide funding support and collaboration opportunities with these uh, startups and also access to many of the top investors locally. We also, we also purchased a dedicated compound library for these startups to start their collaboration and screen for hits to test and prove their hypothesis. And last but not least, we provide a general operational support for the company's growth, establishment, and further scaling up. In return, Roche gets a full access to the Chinese innovation ecosystem. We are always on top with sustained exposure to new ideas and latest technologies. Through collaborations with these startup companies, we have rights and licenses from those collaborations. And by doing all of these above, we have a stronger branding for Roche as the innovation builder in the entire industry. Since its establishment in May 2021, we have gradually grown our portfolio into 11 startups. This includes companies working on small molecules. This includes companies working on devices, epigenetics, cell therapies, as well as companies working on real-world data, omics, as well as AI and machine learning technologies that could empower a faster drug discovery process. And with these 11 startups, we already secured eight early-stage collaborations between these startups and CCOR, as well as many other Roche units. So we really hope that with the collaboration ongoing, some of these results and outcomes could make a real impact to Roche pipeline and portfolio and demonstrate the, the innovation from China could bring value to the patients all over the world. Talking about this state-of-the-art accelerator building with more than, more than 5,000 square meter in the heart of Zhangjiang high, te high Technology Park that Alex introduced a bit earlier, this is the legacy Roche R&D Center China building, and we have completely renovated and redesigned this with the latest Roche design of laboratory, office space, as well as collaboration areas, as well as many advanced and high technology capital equipments so that the startups could start their experiments the day, the day they move in. Of course, this project would be possible without the support and expertise from our, uh, our architects, our lab planners, as well as many other project teams and Roche engineering experts across the entire world. So a huge thank you to all of you guys. I'm gonna give you a very short uh, teasing of the exterior, the facade, the landscaping of the building and also the interior design. So as you can see here, this is the facade with a very classic and timeless Roche uh, facade design. We also built a very unique and landmark um, uh, a rooftop garden so that we hope the entrepreneurs and investors could enjoy a good glass of beer 
on the Friday week, on a Friday night or on the weekends. If you look at the interior, the lab design really holds the philosophy of modularity and flexibility. And I believe our, our partners from Valdener could be able to provide more insights on the design principles on that. A bit of uh, introduction on the layout. So the first floor will be the collaboration uh, areas, the cafe, the canteen, and all the meeting rooms and, and uh, entrance. The, the level two and three will be private labs and offices designed into different size of modules, including biology labs, chemistry labs, and uh, uh, biosafety level two labs, as well as many office areas for the startups to occupy and rent based on their needs and scale. This is just a very brief introduction and I believe the, the layout wouldn't be able to give a much better uh, 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 illustration than uh, an actual video of the entire building rendering. So please enjoy a one minute, one minute of the building rendering video. Hope you enjoyed the video and with that that is towards the end of my part so thank you very much this is uh, the contact details and websites you could take a look and hand over to alex thanks yeah thanks a lot choi song it was really cool the video so thanks a lot for sharing um this ins inspirational space and um, um, a first question to you, Choi Song. Um, what do entrepreneurs value the most for the facility? What do you think? Very great question. We actually asked many of the entrepreneurs on this question. The first thing they value is the fully furnished, well-equipped lab and office spaces. They could rent and start operation from day one because we know many of the incubators and accelerators on the market right now, they might be all furnished. You still need to invest a lot of time and effort to design, to, to develop and build into their own needs. So we actually provide a one-stop and fully integrated solution for them to uh, start their adventure from day one and it saves a huge cost because we know drug discovery is very expensive. Yeah, great. Thanks a lot. I think I I just need an idea, then I will travel to you and knock the door. I want to, <laughs> to start my, my company there. That would be great. 
Um, thanks a lot. So I hand over directly to the planner's perspective. So Zach, it's your turn. Thank you very much. So thank you very much, uh, Dr. Tang, for um, presenting and sharing his experience from an owner's perspective. And obviously, uh, uh, I have to extend my thanks to the Vana Academy for inviting us to share our experience um, on this project as well. So it is an honor for us to be here. And uh, my name is Zach Zing, uh, representing Emos Associates today, and to share with you um, of our experience on this project. It has been an amazing journey, which we started together two years ago. And now the project is almost complete. Um, we can't wait to see the result of it. So today I want to talk about um, mostly three topics. Number one, um, the design vision, how we translate the owner's business vision uh, into the design vision of the project uh, and all the challenges we face along the way and how we could uh, translate these challenges into opportunities. Uh, secondly, I wanna talk about the design and aesthetics and what type of approach we took um, to, uh, to realize this project in terms of the design and how we could explore different options and meanings of the design and implement those designs. And thirdly, I wanna to touch upon the sustainability aspect of the project because um, sustainability has always been such an integral part of Roche project. And um, we just want to uh, talk, you, talk you guys through how we implement a lot of these options and items we looked at. Uh, just to give you guys a little bit of the background of the project itself. So on the left-hand side, that's where the old building is. Um, it was the home of the Roche R&D uh, division, which they relocated into the new Roche Innovation Center project, which went operational in 2019. So we ended up with an old building, MT, and with a lot of potential possibility that we could, what we can do with it. So the building itself is located in the Zhangjiang hub of the Pudong district in Shanghai. And for those who are not familiar with this district, um, it is home to, uh, is a melting pot in Shanghai for a lot of high-tech companies, including pharmaceutical, uh, chemical, IT, et cetera. And in recent years, the Shanghai government has been pushing for a much more R&D focused drive in this area. So if you're in Shanghai and you are looking to start, to start a, a, a startup company, uh, the chances, the, start, the, the chances, the Zhangjiang area is the place to start looking. The campus itself, which the building is located, was built in the early 2000s. So um, much similar to the fast paced development at a time, building, the building development lacks identities. They all look the same and the building itself is not in great conditions. With aging infrastructure, limited ground access, and worst of all, due to the building technology at the time, not much thought was put into the sustainability, if at all. So we knew from the very start that we needed to put in extra effort in this area and overhaul this whole entire building to bring it up to the standard of 2023. So through our project initiation phase, together with the Roche team, we came up and identified with six design success factors. And these are number one, Roche and scientific, how to enhance the Roche virtual uh, visual identity with subtle design elements. Uh, number two, differentiation, how we could make it stand out. Uh, what makes Roche it accelerator different? Number three, innovate and attract. How to create an environment that could uh, attract talents and retain the talents. And if we wanna create this clean and modern, um, part of the Roche identity is the clean and minimalist and timeless approach to design. And that's something we want to create. And then number five, low key and high quality. Uh, we don't want anything that's flashy and we want to pay a lot of attention to your details. And we want to adhere strictly to the philosophy of form follow function, making sure that uh, we don't want to do anything that's flashy. So finally, a collaborative. We want to create a space where people could work together to collide and spark new ideas. 
So obviously this is a laboratory building first and foremost. And the first thing we did was looking at the existing structure and assess the feasibility of building itself. How laboratory modules could be set up in a way that's flexible and expandable. What is the best way to best utilize the existing space from an architectural and structural point of view. And apart from the architectural and structural point of view, we also need to look at it um, uh, uh, from an external environmental impact point of view. Uh, how direct, uh, in this case, how direct sunlight would actually affect the interior area. And by going through all these exercises, we have a much more clear picture of what type of spaces are most suitable for what functions. For example, when we took the first crack at a planning in the space, uh, we do want to take advantage of the facade, uh, the, the space adjacent to the facade, so that that's where the offices and workstations can be located. And then we went through quite a few iterations of the optioneerings just to analyze the different merits of each options and looking at how to position each option, each functions on the floor plate. And we also uh, have conducted a series of benchmarking studies and look at uh, how other accelerators have been designing their labs. For example, on the left-hand side of the screen, you can see that's a much more traditional approach when it comes to an accelerator suite. Um, where you have basically an office connected to a lab, connected to some support labs. And in this case, uh, although it's much more easier to implement a design and build, but it lacks flexibility and expandability. So we went back to the drawing board and came up with this idea of connecting the offices with corridor and also the labs uh, modularly so that they could be expanded infinitely, only constrained by the building envelope itself. And translating this modularity study onto the floor plate itself, and to make sure that we basically maximizing the utilization of the floor plate, and then leaving some essential spaces for uh, highlights areas such as the pantry, such as the pantries, the meeting spaces, and collaboration spaces in between. Now, moving on to the facade, right? Um, we start When we started with the facade, which is going to be the front face of the new accelerator, um, like I said before, every single building on this campus will design exactly the same. So none of these buildings have any identities at all. So we want to make a differentiation here. But at the same time, we want to create the, a very distinctive Roche architectural look. So we want to transform uh, what we would consider an isolated and limited block building into something that's um, open, inviting, warm, collaborative, and which would actually start a dialogue with the surrounding space, a building and the surrounding landscape that interact with each other. And by doing so, introducing something new to the otherwise monotone campus. Drawing upon the inspiration from the iconic Roche architecture, um, we were to create something that's sleek, timeless, elegant, transparent, something that would actually last for 100 years. Um, there, there, there is a saying in the Roche architecture circle, um, which goes, you can design with any color you like as long as it is white. We don't really necessarily see that as a design constraint, uh, but it is a definitive design element of the Roche brand. And then we went through a a lot of design iterations. In particular, we looked at two options. One of them uh, was a very bold and modernist full height facade approach. And then the other one, it's a much tamer, traditional Roche template with strong horizontal language, resonating with the design of the Roche Innovation uh, Center in Shanghai, which is not too far from the site itself. And as Chiu Song shared before, eventually, we settled down on this um, design at the end uh, for reasons, not only for the aesthetics of it, but also for the energy saving uh, or all the other factors considered. So which I'll touch upon uh, when we go, when we are in the sustainability section. Moving on to the inside, um, faithful to the open ground concept, we have a lobby which is open to the multifunctional cafe, which could facilitate town hall meetings, large scale events, multiple meeting rooms of different sizes have been set up adjacent to the lobby for boardroom meetings, visitors and team meetings on demand. 
And on the upper floors is where the modularity and the planning is implemented. And this modularity design directly translate into the flexibility of the laboratory planning as well, which our uh, Vatna colleagues will go into much more detail later on. As for the aesthetics of the ground floor, uh, where the lobby and cafe are located, we strive to create this large open ground space. This is the social hub and what we, be, we would be considering the heart of the accelerator. Um, so we intentionally want to create this warmer and cozier environment uh, while still maintaining this rose scientific look and feel. And on the material, uh, we have implemented some uh, very clean uh, terrazzo flooring uh, and bright, which contrasts with this warmer tone of the wooden ceiling above. And in comparison, you can see that in the meeting spaces on the upper floors, uh, we have a slightly more serious and composed look and feel because this is where work is carried out. Uh, but we are still introducing some playful accent highlight colors in, this, in these floors, in these spaces, uh, just to uh, differentiate a little bit. And in the tenant offices, modular design is critical as we did not know how big future tenants are gonna be. Uh, how many people they are going to bring in, or even if a tenant is starting with four people, they may rapidly expand into six, eight, 20 people in a short period of time. So it is very crucial to specify uh, some kind of flexible partitions, uh, which could be changed later on easily by the operational team. Of course, we not only plan this modularity from an interior design or even laboratory planning perspective, but also the accompanying MEP system together with the Roche team, we had to estimate like uh, how many equipments, film hoods, the cooling loads of each modules, uh, uh, lighting, fixer, lighting fixtures, drainage points, et cetera. So in each module, how combining and splitting of the modules would actually impact the overall infrastructure system in the building and in the future. And Going into sustainability, Roche has a clear vision of achieving absolute zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2050 without compensating and offsetting emissions. And that is a noble goal. And the, K, the, the Roche K directives are basically a set of standards and guidelines that would help designers and planners uh, to moving towards this vision. And instead of an afterthought, our design team have worked with the K directives K directives and the Roche team throughout this design process, striving to balance between the design itself, sustainability, engineering, cost, uh, construction schedule. Sometimes it could be very challenging um, to reconcile all of these different factors. And so what I'm trying to say is all the decisions we made are, are basically the result of a long process of analysis, studies, and logical planning. And that's how we arrived at those decisions at the end. For example, uh, we talked about the facade options before. Like I said before, we looked at two options. One is the full height facade. The other one is the much more traditional strip window approach. And um, although the full height facade option was favored by the designer, um, when it comes to the energy calculation and energy modeling, it simply couldn't measure up um, to the other option. And we even went back to the drawing board and explored different options such as double skin facade, triple skin facade, but considering other factors such as the cost of the project, uh, construction schedule of the project, eventually we decided to retain the second option and sustainability and energy modeling has always been a holistic approach. And we have basically gathered all the information we could have, including the HVAC system, building envelope, the interior material specification, building operational schedule, and all this information forms the basis for the energy modeling of the accelerator to give us a much more clearer picture of how much energy we're gonna consume in the future when the building is operational. And with the help working together with uh, our colleagues with, uh, from Jason Summer, uh, we explored different ways of reducing energy consumption, uh, different options of implementing uh, uh, new innovative ideas of what we can do 
However, not every single options we looked at have been implemented because uh, obviously due to geographical location constraints, uh, different weather conditions, like I said before, cost, uh, schedule issues. Uh, we have implemented some items, but we have not implemented other items. So what I'm trying to say is even though at the end of the day, we haven't achieved 100 things that we looked at, 100 opportunities, but we have tried our best, our very best to basically go back and forth to, to implement all we can to save energy on this project. And I think that covers what I am going to share today. And thank you very much for your time and giving it back to Alex. Yeah, Zach, thank, thanks a lot. I think you, you need much fantasy to transform such a building in a future space and really good job, uh, Zach and, and team. Um, the, if there were many challenges and in your opinion, what was the most challenging, challenging aspect during the planning process? I think uh, the most challenging aspect of the, big, uh, of the initiation period of the project was how to estimate the user requirements because uh, Chiosong was also aware of this issue as well. At the beginning of the project, we basically started from zero, how we could um, estimate what kind of equipment the um, entrepreneurs are gonna bring into the project, uh, what, what kind of equipment that we have to provide for these entrepreneurs and how many people they're gonna have in the offices. So we basically have to estimate all the numbers and uh, technical data the best way we could, and then moving forward on that basis. Obviously with the help of benchmarking, such as the newly um, constructed Ricks building, that was an important benchmark as well. So um, it was a very challenging aspect of the project. Okay, thanks a lot, Sex. And then we, we come directly to the lab spaces and the expert for the lab spaces. So, Tolga, I hand over to you. Uh, thank you very much, Alexander. Um, at Concepts and Innovation, we are helping our client to design a development a process, consulting, and their a journey on sustainability. And it is a pleasure to be here today to talk about those ex exciting new developments happening at uh, Roche Accelerator. Um, as you all know, innovation and creativity are uh, are the key key drivers um, of the progress and the growth, uh, especially in the field of pharma, diagnostic, and the digital healthcare. And we believe uh, that Roche Accelerator provides those ideal environment for those ideas and innovation to thrive. So, what sets Roche Accelerator apart from the others? To put it in a simply words, we have designed uh, many aspects of this facility with the entrepreneurs in mind, from signs, ready suits, and shared services and the facilities. We talk through all necessary steps uh, or the elements that supports that ecosystem for the startup to develop themselves into a certain level and their potential users. And not just about having all the right components in place, it's also about how they're integrated into the working environment altogether. So uh, as Zach mentioned before, I would take a little bit deep dive onto that manner to understand what we did. And also I would like to uh, highlight those points uh, so that you would get the uh, answer why we can accelerate there faster. And we believe that startup needs more than just a place to work and be there. They need to be supported by the community as well as the services and the building by itself. So uh, let's take a, a detailed look and let's take a sneak peek to the backstage. And uh, yeah, we will collect the questions by the, uh, by the end then. Earlier project discussions and the initiative studies, we start uh, with the hand sketches and develop during the calculation of the grid system, which Zach mentioned, uh, especially affecting the building and also the laboratory location in the, on the layout. Uh, and also definition of the individual functioning zones with the provided information of the, uh, of the objectives and targets, potential tenant profiling, which is detailed prepared by a, a, a Moser in this case and handed over to us and the draft device list for the business units and also the potential devices that might be implied into the uh, into the design that was handed over to us 
and uh, that was also the resource for us to di create different strategies and conceptual proposals uh, to iterate and ideate upon. After much collaboration with the stakeholders and a desirable selection uh, was reached to a combination of various options rather than choosing one and offering a central space, mostly secluded activities and the all surrounding areas are designated for the office collaboration and multiple purpose. Uh, but uh, the, the center is reserved for the science and where the action is happening. All while taking into consideration factors like fresh atmosphere and amazing daylight usage was one of the other criteria that it is dictated by also Roche K directives as Zach uh, quickly mentioned in his part. And that was also a one important uh, definition uh, by Roche so that we, uh, whatever we decided and we got together, we got them together on a sustainable basis and high flexibility innovation visions was was the overall language or overall tone of the song let's say aim of aim of this uh, for sure was to be able to provide a chance for users to test their ideas with the provided data and insights uh, by Roche and simulate their ideas in the real case scenario where the environment supports them rather than being in between so um, therefore, the, the, the very next thing we just focus on is the smallest functioning units of the buildings, um, because it was also a really good indication for us to understand the minimum requirements of the space so that we can scale it up into a bigger uh, or, or an extended version. The units are known as the kit of parts, as we can see some examples of hand, uh, hand sketch with this slide. Uh, those are basically purposing as a building blocks for the project, which is the key ele element of the next steps. Uh, we use those building blocks to test fit possibilities um, and understand the space requirements in, into a certain level. The aim of uh, was to later combine those building blocks in a way that makes sense and also uh, supports the needs of the dis different disciplines, process and the, uh, and the users to be able to provide a solid foundation for the design of the space and ensuring all necessary functions are accommodating while maximizing the use of available space uh, and also a good foundation of modularity and scalability, I would say. Uh, so now we are seeing some examples, uh, real life examples, given the fact that the project was carried out during the ongoing pandemic time through the mid times of it, we had to find a, a way to participate with, uh, uh, with the design team. Uh, eventually it becomes a best practice for concepts and innovation for the remote projects uh, though. And we took advantages of online boards for ideation, presentation and decision making all together, which, is an really, which was really integrated process uh, by the help of uh, Choi Song and help of Zach, it was also a really collaborative decision making process to understand the possibilities and their benefits or uh, disadvantages. Um, so we can see those examples, the step by step progress of the future clarification, particularly regarding the building program and the floor program. So we need to know exactly where we locate the which uh, which rooms in in which order that was really important and it was it had to be defined by the program and at that stage it's, it, it was crucial to consider the building technical systems um, shared services or the overall efficiencies uh, in the holistic concept well it it should be a well connected structure in the future because having one unit that it is crucial for your process separated and located into a remote position would be a disaster for the uh, business and uh, for the startups. So that's what we were trying to avoid also. Locating those units in, in, in inefficiently and service around would uh, also ruin the neighborhood concept that it is carried out uh, through uh, different projects at Roche. And that neighborhood project was also uh, bringing the overall integrity of the systems in the building and was also an important point for us to keep in mind. Then we are seeing the, uh, the, the next step, 
next step of the modular arrangement is we have already defined the basic building blocks. Then we are combining the building blocks to give us a function which we call modules in the end, that those modules are de designed to cater those different disciplines and slightly varying use cases of those uh, uh, business units uh, in the future. Uh, or uh, our aim was to create right combinations of those modules of the laboratory space and optimize them into a specific needs of each discipline. Yet the tenants would still be able to grow uh, with a minimum uh, downtime possible uh, uh, during their during their journey, let's say. And also that's that was a pro, uh, providing a, a chance for those startups to be in an a, agile environment and act accordingly fast in case of those uh, changes and or necessary actions they need to take. Generally speaking, laboratory, uh, laboratories require space for preparation, experimenting, collecting data and processing that data, finally storing their inventories. At this stage, we, we were also able to uh, consider those process flow uh, uh, within the functioning units and optimizing it to a certain level uh, where it makes sense and the overall floor is more linear and uh, the, the walk paths are reduced and the distance in between uh, uh, are, are reduced also. Uh, yeah, that's that's the that's that was one of the really key elements of the efficiencies of that uh, of that uh, arrange module arrangement, and also the use of the laboratory space. Uh, coding the viable formula, it says the uh, pre-combined modules together get and create the final formulation for us to follow those room programs. We are seeing one example of it. Um, with the flexible infrastructure and considered neighborhood uh, for chemistry, biology, and biological contained zones becomes together to create familiar and user-friendly environment. Uh, by following a similar design language, uh, we have ensured that users will be easily oriented also uh, within their surroundings in uh, like in any other Roche buildings. By combining modules according to the floor and the building program, we have created a laboratory space concept eventually that not only meets the functional requirements of each discipline, but also a sense of familiar, familiarity and comfort uh, for their users. And it allows users to focus their work and achieve their goals more efficiently rather than thinking about, okay, how we should expand or how we should scale up our process in this way and how long would it take or so kind of questions that it is unnecessary for their uh, practices. Mm, models are surf, uh, served uh, for functions and designed for functions such as wet chemistry, analytical chemistry, and shared service zones, shared building services, such as lab kitchens, cold storage areas, and freezer farms, which ultimately brings us to, uh, to the point of sustainability, and also some imaging areas uh, of the molecules of, or, or the products that they are uh, working on, tissue and cell culture biology suites, and lastly, special applications, as I mentioned, which means uh, BSL2 to 2 plus zones, uh, for uh, for really special and biological biologically contained processes which uh, the units has to perform in that building. We were covered all the process that will be needed for the users and their potential future needing by uh, by all of those studies. And now uh, we uh, as we have uh, looked through the uh, back backstage of those processes, I would once again uh, would like to highlight the points that answers why question, why we can acceler accelerate our business in here question in, in, in the following slides shortly. The first reason why is the, the modularity because modularity brings repeatability and also that uh, repeatability is true of the old building basically on the second and on the third floor uh, that brings an let's say familiar uh, environment for the people who who is working inside and also uh, there was as a uh, uh, choi song mentioned before public offices and the private suites were uh, 
provided uh, during out those uh, designing stages and um, collected combined services are centrally located within the laboratory spaces. So the scientist does not need to uh, consider or worry about their daily wastes or things that needs to be autoclaved, washed away and, and prepared for the next day. So uh, uh, we, were, we, we, we plan to um, provide those services under their hands whenever they, they, they need it. The next thing is the scalability. And that was a really important factor in, in, the, in the building and also in the design because, because scaling up and down is really occasional in the, in the accelerator as companies are prone to also scale and up and down. And therefore they have to do it in a minimum downtime periods. And uh, that's, uh, that's the reason why scalability is really important. And also uh, Zach mentioned slightly about how we were able to sustain that by using partitions panels whenever it is possible. And also uh, providing science ready and future proof uh, suites uh, that may be uh, not exactly matching for all the use cases at the beginning, but can be adapted quickly into the further requirements because who knows what will be needed uh, by the next. Um, no one was expecting a pandemic, for instance, uh, but being able to adapt to those situations fast would bring the ultimate future proof zones uh, for the space and for the usage. And as we mentioned before, that's the reason why it is not in your way to grow, it just supports you through your challenging journey and, and the journeys of those startups. Uh, in a standard layout, we can see the service zones in gray uh, color, collaboration zones are indicated usually a uh, orange color. And um, then we can understand that those are located peripherally where central zones are uh, reserved for the uh, real action in science. And um, also we can see uh, around, the, around the layout, especially by the corners, those maker spaces and uh, collaboration spaces whenever it is needed, tested, presented the ideas uh, for the investors or the collaborators uh, that would still be available throughout the, uh, uh, throughout the layout, which is also one key important factor for the incubators, not only accelerators, but in, in incubators. Um, and last but not least, uh, the special uh, laboratories are indicated in dark uh, blue color, uh, which end up slightly different uh, in the final layout. But we see that, that that those special places are also located centrally so that it is easy to access, as well as it is a, a real close by or adjacent to the uh, central uh, technic systems or the uh, uh, technical systems of the building uh, so that we we provided efficiency in the infrastructure too and um, yeah and overall uh, in the building program we can mention about the complex applications and really special applications mostly located on the third floor uh, by me be keeping in mind that those services and techniques are are in the minimum distance to the uh, to the uh, atmosphere or uh, external um, of the building, exterior of the building. Uh, shared space and imaging facilities mostly provided on the second floor. There are uh, an analytical laboratories which uh, companies can use the HPLCs, chromatographies, or any imaging facilities there and share those uh, high-end or high-priced. Equipments, lab equipments internally, and that would also provide a, a, a sufficiency and efficiency in the in the uh, in the process. Uh, whereas it also enables us to reduce the footprint and pro open the spaces for multi-purpose usage, uh, which is also a really key element of a um, sustainable design, uh, so that it is manageable, it is more controllable, it is shared. Therefore, uh, it is also. Uh, um, easily manageable within the building. So those shared spaces and the standard laboratory suites, chemistry, biology are located on the second floor. And uh, lastly, on the ground floor, high, high social attraction areas are provided to create the wow effect when you're going inside and being able to make meetings, make events, hackathons, or any kind of collaboration activities if you're pursuing, you, you the ground floor is the 
key, key location for you, as well as uh, the main uh, building infrastructure systems that are located uh, on the background for easy access, easy dispatch, easy acceptance of the new materials to the building and uh, being distributed to the upper floors uh, for the, their daily, daily usage. So yeah, that was a quite a short look uh, to our journey and how we were able to create uh, such an efficient uh, space saving as well as uh, really tempting um, uh, tempting scientific space uh, for the entrepreneurs and also the startups uh, yeah thank you uh, very much for your attention and you're always welcome to visit our website for our services and yeah thank you very much for your uh, attention i would say so tolga thank thanks a lot for all this uh, cool lab planning insights, perhaps you can stop sharing your screen. Yeah, great. And a direct question to you. Um, what was the biggest challenge in the lab, lab planning process, in your opinion? Uh, the biggest challenge would, as Zach also mentioned, it, it was just stepping into an unknown future. Whereas it can be a modelable and scalable and predictable in a certain level, but applying that into a really a make sense way to this building uh, was one of the uh, challenges. And also detailing the uh, detailing the space into a certain level uh, that uh, rooms are uh, available for every uh, many application. Uh, uh, within their process, I would say, uh, because if you extend those detailing to a certain level, then you 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 uh, detail that in a really mm, detailed way, let's say, so that uh, we uh, separating room for the future usage and future uh, change in the building was also another challenge I, I, I could say. Okay, thanks a lot. So we, um, we are coming to our Q&A session um, now. And um, I directly, I, I will start with the first question from my, from my side. If, if I told you, if I'm a startup and I want to boost my business at the Roche Accelerator, and the question is for you, Choi Song, um, I'm, it's a pleasure that you come back to the table. And um, what do I have to do if I want to start my business there? Just knocking the door or what, what should I do? The first thing you knew you need to do is to get in contact with us either through our website or through our email because as Roche Accelerator we do hold a very high bar in terms of scientific innovation and also the team of the startup. So as I mentioned earlier throughout our journey so far we have only selected 11 startup companies into our portfolio out of more than 250 candidates. That's a very, very selective ratio of around 5%. So knocking the door is definitely helpful. We're going to open the door for you if we believe you're going to make a great science. Okay, thanks a lot. And I look to the chat, there's a question also for you, Choi Song. And um, what lab services are provided? Exactly. So if you talk about the lab services, this covers the maintenance and sterilization of the lab instruments and also the lab spaces, as well as a holistic uh, service across environment, health, and security. This includes, for example, the environment impact assessment. This includes the hazardous waste disposal service. This includes 24 seven security, as well as all the necessary SHE trainings. And also for those who require the certificate or license to operate the biosafety level two lab, we are also gonna help apply for that license uh, on behalf of your company. Okay, thanks. Then, uh, yeah, and then, of course, as I mentioned, our price, our rent is all included. In addition to lab services, everything you could imagine is included in our service offerings. 
That's really but, great. So I don't have to think about anything. I, I just can focus on my business idea and, and start uh, developing. That's really a great place. Uh, another question uh, to you, Choi Song, um, how to balance flexibility, modularity versus cost and timeline? Um, can you say something uh, about that? That is indeed very challenging because if you go to the very extreme spectrum of flexibility, you're gonna end up spending a lot of money making every room or very lab as flexible as possible. If you go to the very extreme um, spectrum of modularity, then every room can be adjusted or remodeled into different sizes. And that can actually cost a lot of money and making the time of the construction quite long. So we made a compromise by analyzing the majority of our startups needs and breaking down this into different type of groups, right? Instead of providing maximum flexibility, you can offer a limited flexibility of different choices of sizes of small, medium, and large. We're gonna offer choices of lab types of biology, chemistry, and biosafety level two. And also we're gonna offer the flexibility of providing the necessary gas, electricity, and other uh, lab um, uh, supplies per each room. With that, we believe we find a good balance and um, we still achieve our, our timeline and schedule and cost. Okay, thanks a lot, Choi Song. So um, I, there's a question for you, Zach. Um, come to the table. Um, how do you reconcile the Roche design guidelines and the designer's creative direction? I think um, uh, George, just quoting Cho Song's last answer, I think compromise is a good term for it. I don't necessarily see compromise as a negative term because uh, every single ideas, creative ideas, options that come out from the designers, we need to analyze those ideas uh, from all angles, not just from a purely uh, aesthetics and design point of view, but also looking at it from a commercial, uh, a scheduling, uh, sustainability point of view and just taking a very holistic approach to look at everything and analyzing every single merit of every single option to find the best solution to our questions. So yeah, I think just uh, our designers and not just designers, planners, engineers, everybody have to realize that uh, we are designing a lab building first and foremost, and we need to deliver this building, number one, function, uh, number two, we have to do this uh, cost effectively. Number three, we need to do this sustainably. And finally, we need to look at it from a design aesthetic point of view. Okay, another question uh, to you, Zach. Um, what is the process of sustainability implementation? Um, I think it is certainly not a one-stop process. Um, obviously, at the end of the design phase, we have a very much accurate energy model that we could draw upon and analyze and reference. But the actual calculation, uh, the actual fact-finding process of a sustainability started at the very beginning of the project. Um, taking all those uh, uh, parameters from the Roche guidelines, the K directives. Uh, 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 and then we just start from the concept design. Uh, every single uh, end of phase um, delivery reports, uh, uh, calculations, we basically moving a little bit more and more accurate uh, of the energy modeling until the end of the project. So it doesn't, so what I'm trying to say is a sustainably approach doesn't, doesn't start near the end of the project, but it started at the very beginning of the project. And then we ran through this sustainability implementation all throughout the design process and into the construction to making sure at the end of the day, when construction was completed, the final building is gonna be very energy efficient. 
Okay, thanks, uh, Zach. There's another question for sustainability. Tolga, I think this is something for you. Um, which features make the laboratory suites sustainable? Oh, yeah, great questions. Um, to summarize those into, mm, into some um, bullet points, let's say, it would be the reduced footprints of the space, first and uh, foremost, the most important point, because the reduced footprint provides you to process those spaces in a really sustainable way. Once you can have that area for really non risky works and study, and very next day, if you can convert that according to the need to a really high ventilated zone, that would provide you uh, without not having a new investment uh, that would provide you a better sustainability, not only on, on, on energy, but also used and materials and time and cost saves and a lot. So I would say a reduced footprint, uh, common spaces and equipment is another way of making the laboratory spaces more sustainable because it makes things sustainable or the process sustainable if you share them and group them uh, so that not every time uh, that it is uh, consuming like kitchens, laboratory kitchens, cold room, freezer farms, then you are able to control the ventilation, which is one of the biggest energy consuming part in the laboratory. Or if that's a kitchen, then you, you if you are grouping your autoclavables waste, that's also a really good way of uh, saving some energy. Uh, yeah, that, that would also one key, key factor, as well as linear processes, for example, because when it is linear, uh, then it, it's, it's also sustainable for the future. Uh, that the, the, the traffic's risks and safety factors are lowered in the in the place. Therefore, it is more easy to manage those uh, those spaces. And um, and last but not least, that uh, Roche K directives we have uh, talking as uh, Roche dedicates themselves to create the science and doing what patient needs for the next uh, in a really sustainable way. And they are really committing into that. Uh, those uh, Roche uh, directives throughout the design process and enabled us and help us to uh, create those space suits in a more sustainable way, I would say. Okay, thanks a lot, uh, Tolga. There's another question for you, um, Tolga. Um, in your past incubator and accelerator event um, from last year, I remember Life Science Factory in Göttingen or the Life Science Incubator in Singapore has more multi-purpose open lab space areas and open co-working spaces. Why not this time? It's really nice to hear that we have really <laughs> good followers. And uh, yeah, that's basically uh, the simple answer it would be is basically those were uh, mostly located on the uh, incubator site uh, as a building purpose. But this project is more like an accelerator. So the users or the tenants that are, uh, are occupying inside is not uh, really looking for ways or uh, shaping their ideas. They have their ideas in their mind and that could also bring the privacy points at, at some times. Um, so uh, the collaboration is there. We, I have already indicated the collaboration spaces and maker spaces, but it is intentionally reduced to be able to provide those privacy when it is needed. And as it is an accelerator, so people are there is not just roaming, but they are targeting to a certain point. Scaling up and scaling down is more important for them. And yeah, that I would say, a, a really good and simple interpretation of what is the differences between accelerator and incubator uh, onto the design that's i i could i could say easily great thank and, you a lot for, yeah and last Sorry. lastly if if uh, th there will be upcoming event uh, next month uh, about life science factory in Göttingen. if they are interested in more uh, we are more than happy to have them in the in the next session <laughs> next month yeah, th thanks a lot, Tolga. Um, the last question I have goes to Choi Song. Um, what are the next steps for the Roche Accelerator? Do you have something in your mind? Absolutely. We are going to celebrate our second anniversary already this May, while we are going to disclose some new startup companies joining Roche Accelerator and also some of the collaboration highlights from 
the ongoing partnerships with Roche R&D Center here in China. In addition, as I shared with everybody here, the building is finally complete very soon uh, towards the end of Q1 and beginning of Q2, 2023. So we're gonna have a big inauguration ceremony in the second half of 2023, where I believe most of people will be able to travel to China without any restrictions and the COVID situation around the world is eased up. In the meanwhile, I believe many of the Roche senior leaders, board members, they might join this important milestone together with our VIP guests locally. So everybody is invited and take a look at the building in real world. Yeah, thanks a lot. That sounds exciting. So everybody is invited coming to, to the Roche Accelerator. Um, that's great. We wish you good luck and many good startups, good ideas and so on. So all the best for the Roche Accelerator. Thanks um, for your impulses, Choi Song, Zach and Tolga. Thanks a lot. And um, as Tolga already mentioned, um, we have um, a next Waldner Academy event at the 1st of March about the Life Science Factory. It's an incubator, um, the place where magic happens. And they opened their doors one year ago and we will have a lessons learned session and look back what was good, what was not so good, what could we learn from this project? So it's on the 1st of March. And my guests will be Dr. Jan Borkowski, he's the site. Uh, director of the Life Science Factory, Susanne Ebert, she's a project architect from Holzer Kobler Architects, and Thorsten Rosenkranz, director from Eurolabor, the lab planner view. And if you missed a live event like Incubator Accelerator from last year, or Wellbeing Labs, or Digital Labs, or even the Roche Piret Innovation Center um, last year, you can find that on our website or on YouTube. Um, also this session, um, the recorded video, I think we will promote that next week or latest uh, to in, in two weeks. So you can forward this session and promote the Roche Accelerator all over the world and invite the people to, to, to the grand opening. So thanks a lot again for everybody joining us and have a, have a nice day. Thanks a lot. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.